So here's another general solution. Now, we can see these two x's over here. So that's typically a grade 12 kind of thing. Sin 2x is always very nice. Why? Because it can only become one different, th well, one other thing. So we can always change that one with confidence. Okay, so I'm going to change it to 2 sin x cos x. But I'm not going to change cos 2x just yet. Why? Because it can become three different things. And I'm not going to waste time in my test trying to figure out what to do. So I'm just going to leave that one for now until the op until it, I can see what it needs to change into. Okay? So I'm going to put all this together. So that's just going to give me 2 sin squared x cos x plus cos 2x equals to 1. Now remember when we were doing identities, we said that typically it, getting rid of a 1 simplifies things for us very nicely because we always want to have as little terms as possible. So if I had to bring that 1 over, we'd have it equal to 0. Now we can change this to whatever it needs to be changed to in order to get rid of the 1. So I'm going to change it to this middle one over here. Because then what happens is the following. So we're going to keep it as 2 sin squared x times cos x plus. Now cos 2x is going to change to 1 minus 2 sin squared x minus 1 equals 0. These 1s are now going to cancel out. Then what you want to do is realize that we have two terms and there's a common factor. You can take out a 2 and a 2 and you could also take out sin squared x. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to take our 2 sin squared x and we'll be left with cos x in the first term. There won't be anything left in the second term, so we'll just say minus 1. There we go. And so carrying on over here, we could then say, remember when you end up with a situation like this, which is similar to this over here, just let this part equal 0 or let this part equal 0. So we can say 2 sin squared x equals to 0 or cos x minus 1 equals to 0. So here I'm just going to divide by 0. So it's going to be sin squared x equals to 0 because 0 divided by 2 is 0. I'm then going to square root. But the square root of a 0 is just a 0. So there we have sin x is equal to 0. Or cos x is going to be equal to 1. Now these, remember that's not the answer. The goal is to solve for x, not sin x or cos x. So those become two brand new questions now. Okay, so I'm going to carry on over here. So remember in the previous lesson, we said that when you have a sin causal tan equal to 0, 1, or minus 1, you don't solve it using the normal quadrant method. What you do instead, because it's a lot faster, is you just draw the graph. I can see that sin is equal to 0 over there, there, and there. And of course, if the graph had to carry on, then those would keep continuing. So we can say that the answer starts over here, which is at 0 degrees, and it will repeat itself every 180, right? Because that's a 180 gap, and it will keep doing that the whole time. And then I'll just say n is an element of integers. And that's it for that. You don't have to go do quadrants. Here we have cos x equals to 1. So we just draw a cos graph. Now I can see that cos x is equal to 1 over there, over there. And if the graph had to continue, then that would keep repeating. So the first answer is at 0 degrees. And then it repeats itself. Now this isn't every 180. This is actually repeating itself every 360. So we'll say n times 360 n is an element of z. And that's it. That's how you do that. Okay, now with number 2, we've got a cos 2x. Now we need to know what it needs to be changed to. Now remember, if we can change, the, okay, so if we had to choose this first option over here, you would have a trinomial looking expression, but you would be stuck with cos, cos squared and sin squared. So what you've got to look at is you've got to realize that we already have a sin x. So ideally, this would also turn into a sin. And that's why we are going to choose option number 2. So it'll be 1 minus 2 sin squared x plus sin x plus 2 equals to 0. And now we have the nice trinomial. Of course, we just have to simplify it a little bit like that. I'm then going to divide by a negative. 
and there we have it and then you can go ahead you can try factorize it I like to just use the quadratic formula and what you're going to end up with is that sin x is equal to minus 1 or sin x is going to be equal to 1.5 now those each become their own question for this one over here if you had to carry on with that you would try to get a reference angle by saying shift sin of 1.5 but you'd get an error and that is due to the fact that a sin graph can only go between 1 and minus 1 it doesn't go up to 1.5 so that one's an error for sin x equals to minus 1 remember and I think I might have said it in this video but I definitely said it in the previous video is that when you have a sin causal tan being equal to minus 1, 0, or 1, you can solve it by just using the graph. So we can see that a sin graph equals minus 1 over here. And if you had to carry on drawing multiple sin graphs, you'd see that it would always be over there. So that's 270 degrees, and it repeats every 360. So to give that answer for sin x equals to minus 1, you could just say that x is equal to 270, plus every multiple of 360. That's what this part does for us. And that's it.